Hello boys! Okay, so a question we get asked uh, on a regular basis on the channel <clears throat> is what do we feed our pigs? Other than my fingers. <laughs> what do we try to feed our pigs? <laughs> <clears throat> they don't call them pigs for nothing, right? <clears throat> so it's a commonly asked question, and I thought, well, let's go ahead and do a video dedicated to that. So there are three things that we feed our pigs that get them to the weight that we want in the right time, finish well with the flavor we like. So let me detail this for you. Somebody punched you in the nose, buddy. How'd you get a bloody nose? Hmm. So the first thing, an obvious thing that we feed our pigs, these are our boars, um, but everybody gets the same, is a commercial feed ration. Currently, right now, since we're feeding boars and we're feeding sows and our piglets haven't switched over to feed yet, they're kind of tasting it right now, we're feeding everybody a 12% protein ration. When the time comes for the piglets to be weaned and go on feed, then we'll actually introduce them to a 16% protein. So we'll give them a little bit higher protein so they can get that, uh, that transition from, from nursing over to actual feed that can just help boost, get them a good head start in growing out. So this commercial ration that we feed is just that. It's a commercial blend by our local feed mill. And instead of going through all the ingredients of what it has, I'm just going to show you a picture of a tag close up here. Feel free to obviously pause the video and read the list if you want to know all those details. Now for some of you purists, you may be like, hey Troy, that's not, is that the best feed to be giving them? Shouldn't you be doing non-GMO? Shouldn't you be being organic? Shouldn't you be doing soy free? Well, yeah, all those things I would like to investigate and get into, but it really comes down to a position of logistics money and time. I don't have any local options when it comes to non-GMO, organic, soy-free, all those things. That's just not, ag West Virginia is not a big ag state, so the little bit of ag that we have is, is pretty conventional. I already drive an hour to get the feed that I have now, and it is a local mill, and they buy from local farmers, so I like supporting local farms. I like supporting a local business. If I was to special order from them, non-GMO or organic, they would be coming from out of state. And yeah, you know, I'd, I'd obviously rather spend that money on somebody local and support other farms. But honestly, I'm still, the six years I've been raising pigs, I'm still trying to figure out what's the best fit for our farm when it comes to that type of feed. So if I was raising these pigs in confinement, and this was all that I was giving was this commercial grade feed, then that would be where I'd, I'd have an issue. But obviously, not in confinement, on pasture, they have access to some other elements that I think helps balance this out. I've talked about in other videos where the soaking and fermenting of feed has really been beneficial for us. Not only for me, but for the pigs. There's not nearly as much waste. The digestibility seems much, much better. And I, I, I see that and say that because of examining the fecal material. It seems to be uh, much less of an odor. There's no large grain pieces in the fecal material. And um, I was able to feed a lot smaller ration this year and still got pretty good feed ratio conversions. I did a video discussing all of that I can link to. In my experience, I've also been able to dodge a lot of mineral deficiency issues. Since this is a well-balanced commercial feed, uh, it seems to have all the ingredients to have a good mineral balance, vitamin balance. So I haven't run into any deficiency issues that um, you may find with pastured pigs where it's just a single source type of feed. 
So another thing I feed pigs, and I, and I don't have as much choice in this uh, any other way, is mast. And with the silva pasture, with a forested pig lot, pig pasture, whatever you want to call it, giving them access to all of this fall mast is just incredible. And I've noticed even with my three sows, two that are nursing right now, the ration that I'm giving a five gallon bucket to three very large sows, just one bucket a day, they'll leave some of that behind because they are able to come through here and forage on so much mast. We've had a great year. So this is right where they, in fact, this is their bathroom. This is right where their fecal material is left. You know, there's acorns. There's a huge white oak here behind me that produces acorns like crazy. There's another small one here. Uh, this is a beech tree, and the beech nuts have uh, pretty much all fallen off. Yeah, I don't see, well, I see a couple there. So just here, right outside their barn, see, Merida's ready. She's, she's got her belly full. The trough's not even half empty. Well, I guess maybe a little bit half. And she's ready to call it a day. So she's going to head in here and take her nap for the night. But they have access to all of this woodlot you see behind me and uh, behind the camera as well. And this time of year, like I said, it's just, it's just covered in, in nuts. So we've got acorns, we've got hickory nuts, we've got walnuts, and we've got beech nuts. <laughs> so this one mocker nut hickory right here that you can see the rub against. It's like walking on marbles right now and shells because of all the husks and the uncracked hickory nuts. So this one mocker nut just drops a ton of mast, again, right here by the barn. And before you wonder, well, that hickory nut's pretty tough. There's no way a pig's gonna get through that. They eat that like it's a peanut. They crack that without any problems. So this is why I just can't say enough about the silvo pasture concept. And I've done a lot of videos on that, so I'm not gonna beat that drum too much. But here's just another example. So this white oak, it's about 10 inches in diameter. I've got a double trunk hickory here, two small ones, seven inches or less in diameter. Both of these had a lot of poplar around it. You can see this broken down poplar snapped off, but I had cut a lot of poplar and a lot of other small underbrush trees out. These trees, as they were competing for canopy, were growing very tall, very straight, very quickly, as quickly as they could, of course, and not producing a lot of side branches. This white oak, three years ago, did not have any of this. All the way up to 30, 40 feet in the air, it was like a foam pole. Opening this canopy up has allowed those of the branches to come in and grow out. And these branches are already producing mast. But this tree, just in clearing out some of the other unusable, unwanted around it, can now produce probably twice to three times to four times as much mast just from one tree because we opened the canopy up. So it's really like creating free food for the pigs. I do keep other non-protein producing trees for specific purposes. Uh, a, obviously if you just haven't gotten to them, like, like a lot of the poplar you see around here, is because to me that's the best way to inventory logs for milling is have them still be standing because they don't rot, <laughs> actually get bigger. Uh, another would be like this red uh, maple right here. Uh, same situation, he was really scrubby didn't have much of a canopy, actually used a canopy on one side, but as I've cut away all the trees around it, it started to grow up. And I really like the shade that a red maple produces. I mean, you can still get uh, maple syrup from a red maple, just not as good concentration. And of course, also locusts. You see several locusts right here. I really like having those around, of course. Uh, great fence posts, great wood material, and uh, so I don't cut those down unless I need them. But having all this mast in the woods, this time of year is why I like to finish my pigs in the fall. It's, it's, it's better to finish on that mast because that affects flavor and marbling and fat cap and all that type of stuff. Whereas starting with them, it gives them you know, a good kickstart. But uh, if they don't have mast when they finish, then that, that flavor curve can wind down a little bit. Um, may not be as noticeable to most. Um, even I, I can't say that if you laid two pork chops down in front of me, I could say that one was finished on acorns and that one wasn't. It's not like we're doing Iberico uh, products here. So these new piglets will actually start as they, uh, as they get weaned here in November. There'll still be plenty of mast on the ground, so they'll be able to start enjoying some of that, and that'll help them put on weight faster as they start their grow out. 
So the third thing that we offer the pigs uh, to eat so they'll grow better is, of course, pasture. That's the whole premise of a pastured pig. So here's a pretty good example of just how much they eat down. So these beech limbs right here in a pile that will be chipped soon uh, are hiding some of the pasture grass, whereas here it's free and clear. So you can see when it was growing, it was growing this tall <laughs> when it's uh, unmolested by the pigs. But here where they can get to it and graze it down, they'll graze it down pretty heavily. So that's what I like about these breeds that we have from David Crafton now. They definitely graze better than my Duroc Hampshire mixes that I had. Yeah, kneel down in a big pile of pig poop. So the issue that I have right now with pasture is just the quality of pasture. A lot of what you see here is Japanese stilt grass. And that stuff is just taken over in uh, cleared areas. Anywhere I clear out new land, before I even get seed down, it seems like the, the stilt grass has already taken over. Fortunately, pigs eat it just like they eat anything else. So I was freaked out about it at first. And then when I saw this, uh, these new breeds that I got from David eat it the way they did, I'm like, eh, all right, I'm not going to freak out that much about it. I would still like to improve. And uh, as, as I let, as, as they overwinter in some areas here, then the plan will be to come back and seed heavily and hopefully get ahead of some of this stilt grass. But it grows so fast and so thick. I'm curious to see what my efforts will be to try to beat it out. And another big improvement I need to do with pasture is, of course, get my rotation schedule down better. Uh, as we try to conquer new areas and put fence in, uh, I let the pigs come in and, and really lay waste to it to try to get the underbrush out and some of those things. But as we get more pasture opened up and get a rotation cycle figured out, then hopefully that'll improve and, and allow the quality of that grass to get better. You can see behind me across the valley, I don't know if you can see that blue tarp, that's a chicken tractor that has some egg laying chickens in it right now. But that is one of our best pastures. And I've kept pigs off of that for an entire year. And it wasn't necessarily intentional because now it's you know, all that grass has grown up and actually kind of gone past its prime. There's even some small saplings growing up there that, uh, we'll, that they'll take care of when we move them over. But realizing we were going to have fall fairway, and I thought, well, I'm going to overwinter a decent group of pigs. So I want to have some area that when they start on, we've, we've already had our first frost, so nothing's growing now. So when they start on that, I want to have a lot of material for them there to work through. So we can see that blue tarp all the way that way about 200 yards and then down to the front of our driveway maybe another 150 yards is pasture is is fenced off so they have access to it so there'll be some good mast over there for them to gain as well but eventually the plan is to have a rotational process where they're coming through multiple pastures and then even get back to our next bench which is our next area that, like this, I say flat, you guys wouldn't call this flat, but our next semi-flat area on the next ridge back, or next bench back on the ridge. So a fourth item that we feed out that's maybe a bonus, it's, it's not necessarily adds directly to their weight gain, but it actually helps with digestion and helps that with their growing, is pumpkins, raw pumpkins. This time of year, of course, is the best time. The benefits that we've seen is a natural wormer, especially for our sows, because they'll eat copious amounts of pumpkin, pumpkin seeds. And it seems that those are good for worming. So what I end up doing in this situation, if we've raised some pumpkins, which this year we, we have a, had a small pumpkin patch of the snowball pumpkins, little white ones. Um, not quite sure how those will do. I like the big honking orange ones that people buy for Halloween. So right now, you know, we're, we're 30 minutes from Yuppieville, so I like, to, uh, I like to go visit my in-laws, and their neighbors always, you know, after uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving, and, and those pumpkins are now not necessarily the decoration you want, they put them on their curb to be thrown out for trash. So I'll stop and, and uh, you know, obviously confirm that they're trash, toss them in the back of the truck, and there's times I've come home with 20 or 30 pumpkins. I tell friends at church, hey, when you're done with your pumpkin decorations, bring them to church, toss them in the back of my truck, and uh, we'll make sure they get disposed of. So there'll be a week or two where pigs are just getting fat and sassy on pumpkins. And so they like the flavor, of course. The benefit I have for them is not necessarily for their finishing, but it's for intestinal health with deworming. So that's a little tip there for you. So what do we not feed our pigs? Well, there actually are some things that, that I choose not to feed. And the first is post-consumer waste. 
And I guess that's just a fancy term for anything that you can get from commercial food sources, uh, you know, consumer grade, uh, people grade, if you want to call it, uh, those type of food items. Um, I was given an opportunity one time to have an entire dumpster load of Krispy Kreme donuts that were um, unsuitable for for people. Although I would, that would be tough to have a dumpster load of Krispy Kreme donuts that are unsuitable for human consumption. Anyway, it's another story. Um, offered that entire load uh, to feed my pigs. And I'm like, no, nah, I, I don't want to do that. Two reasons, of course. The first reason is technically and legally um, in our state, and I think it's the same in all the states, is post-consumer waste to keep diseases from spreading between humans and animals. Any post-consumer waste has to be boiled down. So I'd have to bring all those donuts back, put them in a big vat of water and boil all that and just have a sloppy mess. A um, lot of work uh, for a lot of something that's just going to obviously dissolve into sugar water. And of course, along that same point is, do I really want my pigs finished on all of that sugar? Something that we would never think of eating. Uh, and we're going to give a pig all that and then turn around and eat that pig. So I don't like the finishing aspect of post-consumer waste. Now, if you found a, an organic grocery store that was getting rid of a lot of their produce, okay, yeah, maybe that's a different story. I don't have resources like that. Uh, Chinese restaurants, fast food places, that's really all you're going to find. And that doesn't suit me at all. So even when it comes to personal table scraps, scraps that come from our table, I don't feed those to my pigs that I'm finishing. Hey, quite frankly, it's just not enough volume. It's not like we have a ton of leftovers and a ton of waste. You can tell by looking at me, there's not a lot of leftovers that get thrown out. But there's not enough volume for that to really matter. And I just don't like playing around with that. There's you know, just certain flavors. Obviously, we eat a lot of pork, so I'm not going to give pork scraps to my pigs. Just something about that seems odd. But sometimes I will. If we've got uh, something extra special, you know, maybe we've had a good vegetable a harvest and Kelly's cooked some things, I may bring that to my sows or to my board. And I don't mind a pig that's going to be sticking around for a long time to have some of that. Now, scraps from our garden, uh, definitely. Anything that we have, any of our vegetables that we haven't brought into the house to eat, you know, maybe a blemish on them or a big bug or a big split or something like that, then, of course, we'll feed those to the pigs. That helps uh, just have, the, have an eclectic diet there. So if you're watching this video on the day that it came out, which should be, if I did everything right, it should be October the 22nd. There's uh, another Olight special I want to talk about, and this is, I think, probably the coolest light I've seen yet from them. Olight has the O-Lantern. So this is a mini camp lantern, and it has three different settings, multiple lumen settings, really is a bright, bright lantern. Obviously, it's, dang, come on. it's not dark. Um, it's not dark yet, so you can't see... Uh, there we go. You can't see all the different settings and, and do it justice. But I assure you, this light is, is very bright and very compact, of course, and built super quality. And the reason why I know that is I took it out of the package when they sent it to me in my kitchen, pulled the lid off of it and dropped it out of my hand. And it landed on its top without this protective cover on it, on its head, on our tile floor at, what am I, I'm six foot two. So it was probably four and a half feet off the ground. Didn't break it. Didn't. I mean, didn't do anything. It has just a tiny little scratch in it. Uh, so definitely durable. You guys have seen, obviously, I have an extensive Olight collection now and, and really enjoy their flashlights. This one was one of my favorites just simply because it's it's different. It's a camp lantern. Um, I love having something like this that I can hang and set up. Uh, it's already come in so handy and using it in. You're coming in at night to check on the pigs or check on the chickens. Uh, flashlight does one thing, but if I've if I need to actually work on moving some things around, then I can just set this up or hang it on a hook and it'll light up the whole uh, farrowing barn. It'll light up the chicken coop. Um, it does quite well. But uh, starting today, October 22nd, they are doing a, uh, a flash sale on this up to 40% off. So it's a really good price on these. And of course, a lot of the de details look down in the video description there and you'll see that. If you would, if you're, if you're thinking about buying a light, just use my affiliate link if you would, please. Obviously, that helps support the channel and shows Olight that uh, I'm worth talking about, right? Um, but I, like I said, I've really enjoyed these lights, and I've yet to find a bad one. 
And I've been showing O-lights now for oh, almost two years. And even the first one I have still goes strong. And I know that's that's the thing you, you, know, you always wonder with we YouTubers that promote something, what's the longevity of it? And, and I'll still 100% stand behind these lights. They are, they are built like tanks. And speaking of O-lights, we did a drawing a couple months ago to give away one of our, our O-lights. And the person that won never responded. We sent multiple uh, inquiries there to get a mailing address, and, and we didn't hear back, unfortunately. So there's now going to be two lucky people. They each get their own Olight, and their names are going to be listed here. We're going to email you. If you're not happy to watch the channel, if you don't watch the videos, we'll send you an email. But you need to respond within a couple weeks to let us know what your address is so we can send it to you. Uh, and, of course, make sure that you're interested. So... Uh, be sure to respond if you get an email from us. It'll come from my Red Toolhouse account. Well, we'll definitely keep you all updated on the pigs as we move forward. Time to hit the hill. Take care, everybody. Don't literally hit the hill.